name is Akshat Sinha and I'm an artist and a curator. Today, I'm in conversation with Hazel. Hello, everyone. Hi. So, today, Hazel and I will be having a conversation about how this exhibition, De Volta Vida, which means, which is a Portuguese phrase and means back to life, came about at the Open Palm Court Gallery at the India Habitat Center. So first of all, thank you so much, Hazel, for being with me in this conversation. It's a pleasure, Akshat. It's, it's very nice to be uh, sharing my journey of art with you. And interestingly, this journey of art, we have discussed about it in pieces when we have discussed about how to conceptualize the exhibition. Yes. But I think for a larger consumption, for people to get to understand, why is your show called Back to Life? Maybe let's start with that, how this, this part about, why is it so important to call it Back to Life? Right. So, um, I'll start with the philosophy that I've always had in my life. Right. Um, I've always thought that, you know, anything that's broken or anything that sometimes we feel that, okay, this is something which is not of use. Anything that is not of use, um, as humans, sometimes we tend to not see value in it. And that's where I was like, you know, if there's something that's, that's lost, lost its use, doesn't mean it's lost its value, right? So, it, I think all of us deserve a second chance in life, right? And that is where that thought came to me that, okay, if something is broken, why can't it, it, be, it be beautiful? You know, every one of us, somewhere or the other, we have cracks in us. We, you know, we, we are broken in some way or the other. Life throws so many challenges. And that's where, you know, all my work is inspired from that it should be brought back to life. It should enjoy its life with all its brokenness, with, with all its flaws. Just embrace it. So it's interesting how in my own practice of art, I have uh, looked at objects as triggers for nostalgia, triggers for memories. And I tend to use, use them as they are and just juxtapose different objects together and you know, kind of forcing a narrative from the visitor. But you, in your practice, use these objects and I can see there are brooches, there are broken flower pots, there are plates. There's so many different objects from your day-to-day -day life but you don't use them, you take them, build upon them, recreate them, repurpose them, and then there is a sense of resurrection that happens. That's right. So while I feel that we do have similar takes on how life should be looked at and how the brokenness of an individual or of an object should be looked at, our approach of how we present it to the public is different. Right. Was it always like this for you? So when you started off, you're not a trained artist in the true, I mean, in the sense how the world perceives it. Right. You are a working professional. Why don't you tell us something about yourself, about your education and your journey leading up to the art that you've started? Right. Um, so this is like, you know, it will be something a little interesting for, <laughs> for you to know. So um, I started off saying that, you know, I really want to go into the science stream. Right, and uh, chemistry used to be my, used to, nahi, abhi bhi, like chemistry really, uh, you know, I am really intrigued with that subject. Right. So, I wanted to do the best in chemistry. Mm -hmm. So, that's how I started. Right. Then, uh, somewhere, you know, I was like, okay, I need to uh, get into the marketing intrigued me. So, I start, I got an MBA from uh, Mumbai University in marketing majors. Art came to me, I think, very late. So, um, it, for some reason or the other, I mean, I had always thought that, okay, art is something which I need to keep aside. I have my whole life to look at because this is something which I, you know, would not be able to, um, you know, go ahead with or maybe for some reason or the other, right? I have a question here before we go for further. Because right. you are saying that you felt that you needed to keep, keep art on the side to follow the dreams or the regular, you know, what is expected out of you. Right. 
but does that also mean that art was already a part of your psyche and your desire at some point yes it was before you actually started practicing it and you decided that it was not something to be kept in the background itself so was art already a part of your thought process art and you were was, holding it back art was always a part right um so if if now this is a very interesting question because it uh, stirs up so many so many pages you know back into my life i've always been a back uh, page doodler so you know like that's i uh, maybe a very visual person anything anything and everything would be like you know i would just imagine in forms of pattern right. or a doodle or a poem right so yes i think I, but i just left it at there you know i didn't right. i didn't really pursue it it's also interesting because today we had a visitor a very young visitor and he had his own cartoon characters that he had picked up from manga and anime and he was drawing and i was having that conversation with the child and uh, he was he really had a good hand and i offered that in case that he desires any kind of a feedback or desires to discuss his storylines or his characters or how to take it forward a 12 year old child do you think had you got some kind of an you know support at that time it would have helped or do you think that it's a part of journey of life so it's absolutely fine how do you look at that part you know i mean guidance and mentorship at a young age for an i'm not saying even an artist but somebody who looks at art does art as a practice beat on the back pages of a notebook but your art was good but you kept it aside was it out of fear or do you think had there been some kind of a guidance or a mentorship that would have happened from the school or the family support and all could that does that society need to change is what i want to ask yeah. from this um to so first um i i would answer to the first part right. what you said is that uh, whether if i would have been encouraged at that point and if you know i have anything like that you know oh i should have you know done it in a different way so uh, what i feel is everything just falls in place you know things come to you what is what is destined is destined like you know that artist in any person i don't think if that person is an artist and i believe personally i believe every person is an artist in some way or the other so that has to come out in some whether you know you are trying to put it aside because of some priority or maybe because you are not encouraged for it but i think somewhere it will come out it will express itself and i think there is nothing right or wrong about it because it's come at that time and i think we should just embrace it just embrace it i personally believe that uh, you know the society should be a little more uh, open towards mistakes and you know what i feel is there are no mistakes and um so i'll tell you a very small incident is that my daughters they they love doing art but the moment you tell a child that uh, okay this is the right way and this is the wrong way i think creativity stops there i didn't want to be their teacher because you know i don't believe in teaching and neither do i believe that you know i believe that the person should have observation you know um interact with the environment and then put the thoughts now if i teach then it becomes that you know i am creating a pers- a little person like myself which i don't want like you know why should i kill the individuality of that child but uh, since she you know i wanted like she would learn some ways of how to go about certain techniques i in- introduced her to one art class now what happened there is it it was a very it was going very well but then there you know like she was like okay she would come back to me and say mama but this is something which is not right i think i have gone out of this line so this is wrong teacher said this is wrong i should not so that is when i thought that oh, so what if she has gone outside the line yeah. you know like that also becomes a part of the art like we when as kids we always tell show them an apple and say that color inside the line right 
I'm sure uh, in nursery there is a, there is uh, there is a particular reason they do it, you know, because they want the child's fingers to develop the motor skills, right? But I think we should stop at some time and you know let the child explore and tell them that you know mistakes are okay. I think going beyond the line, going outside the line, should not be named as mistakes. Exactly. So because when you say that, you know, we should tell them that it's fine to make a mistake, that in itself has a preconceived notion of a right and a wrong. Right. I'm sorry, we, we've kind of moved away from, <laughs> from what uh, your show and this show is about. We have, I think, about 51 works in the entire show. Yes. and. Uh, so they were developed over a period of how many years? So I started off in 2013 okay. and all this that you can see here is, has, is an evolution. So you know it's been various works over a period of these years. So I remember when I came to your house and we were trying to go through your artworks and you know then there were so many of them and seriously there were so many of them. I was so happy to see that somebody is really experimenting and you know experimenting but also repeating because unless you repeat you do not know if it was a flash in the pan thing or is it something that you consistently can deliver. So when I look at your works there are similarities but there are also uh, variations and then there are changes and then there are changes which you do not go back to and probably this is something that I read as an outsider maybe you creating them they are all your babies yeah. so you might not be able to distinguish between them. But you have also shifted from mediums. So can you tell us about the journey about how you experimented with mediums and how did they come about for you? Right. Um, I think Akshat, you are just asking the right questions to me because um, it's just been like, so I, I have never given a thought to this, right? But now that you're telling me, uh, first, when I started off, right. as I told you, you know, I started off as uh, doodling back pages, right. I could only think of graphite okay. and ink right. because we used to have those fountain pens mm -hmm. and you know I used to love the way the ink would uh, interact with the page. Right. So I, would, I could only think gradients. Colors were like I would not look at colors because you know I couldn't think in terms of colors. It would always be like you know I, I, if, I, if there is a particular thing I want to uh, draw, I would only think in terms of the gradients. Right. So that, and that would only be possible for me with graphite right. or at that point in time right. when I started um, and fountain pen. So that was the first part of my journey. Then slowly, you know, I moved to coffee because again, I couldn't think colors. Yeah. So, so the, sepia tone, the sepia tone intrigued me. So that uh, and the, of course, you know, the coffee is one medium which you can even uh, enjoy right. while you can sip, while you can you sip it while you are while you're creating art. And then I moved on to ink, which again is not was not a lot of color, like, you know, blue ink or black ink. And then the well, last one was the watercolors because I think I mustered some courage that I should, okay, now try to, uh, you know, experiment with this medium. Was there an incident, a workshop, something that you attended or something that you looked at? Because it's a big change for the first, second and the third kind of iterations of your experience and your experimentation. They're all in gradation. Even when you move to coffee, it's still gradation of the same tone, right, of the same color. What, what happened? I mean, how did you push yourself to buy that watercolor and, and try the colors itself? What made that happen? Um, so, uh, when I started off my journey, uh, I had taken a sabbatical from work and there was this point in time when I used to really go out and interact with so many, like, you know, various, the, I would just, uh, go through Facebook and Instagram and see what are the events around. Okay. okay. Art, -related, Art -related, events. related events. And would just try to go and you know, participate, like just go for an art talk, just go and because I just wanted to see, okay, this is what I'm doing, but you know, what's happening. Right. Right. And th that, that really opened up 
uh, avenues for me and in terms of understanding how others work with colors how you know and and there used to be these talks where watercolors every there, there used to be groups where watercolors is like oh i wouldn't uh, wouldn't dare to touch watercolors right now so difficult yes and there would be one a group which would say watercolors is the best i mean they, you don't have to think they work by themselves you know you have to you have to let it go and this word let it go was like yeah i mean it it really related to me so i said come on i should you know go for it max to max it will be something which will be like you know colors mm -hmm. and maybe i could you know doodle on it correct so it will become a background yeah it could go along <laughs> yes right. so that's how it started see you are you are working on newspaper you are working on paper you are working on cardboard but you are also working in objects you are working on broken flower pots how did these things happen so work because they're not the easiest of meeting uh, medium or support to work on like this is an artwork that you've created on a charpai so how did you move from using an object in your artwork to actually repurposing the object itself very interesting <laughs> yeah so again the same uh, going back to the same philosophy which you know i started off with right. is that everything deserves a second chance you know and uh everything in our life there is some memory you know associated with it and it have hold some value in the life and once it uh, loses that usefulness i mean it, it was very difficult for me to you know say that okay just because it's lost its usefulness uh, it's of no value so why not give it a second chance and why not you know work with it like for this charpai yeah. it was it was lying in the corner and you know the it's one of on one of side. uh, the sides is broken so i i was actually wanting to install it on my wall mm. and you know just throw some colors and make it give it look like you know if it had to write a autobiography it would be like oh i have a new life mere liye ye philosophy jo hai na back to life aur ye mere liye bahut hi mere mere liye bahut hi it is it's been very close to me uh my first very first desire and very honestly i'm telling you is that i wish uh, people could get something out of it you know like learning because you know uh, personally if you ask me in my life i have had a lot of uh, you know which people would say mistakes people would blame you oh tumne aise nahi kiya you know you should have done this why didn't you do that you, you know like the regrets and a lot of guilt i think from this exhibition which celebrates brokenness mujhe lagta hai ki today in today's life everyone feels so broken right. and they are just beating themselves up right. i think this beating yourself up should stop and you know you should celebrate what you are regardless of the cracks regardless of how broken you are you have a life live it i mean just just you know like tie your ponytail and just move on you know because uh, you have just one life i think i hope that yesterday when i was talking about uh, at the opening i was talking about that broken is beautiful i hope this resonates with the people who are uh, you know looking at this uh, these works here right. that is the first biggest thing objective for me and second of course you know every artist uh, would want this that you know people should know them uh, for for their work right. you know and 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 the financial part of it which is 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 quite challenging yeah because you pay for everything to be in this situation where you can speak to reach out to people but then uh, there needs to be a support exactly. for the next to happen yes. not just the appreciation to give you the the impetus you know mental impetus to follow it up and do it in the future as well but there has to be a financial support as well absolutely Like, nothing comes free like akshat you did that yadgar yeah i mean it was such a beautiful you know it it was so similar like it you know it took you back in time nostalgia and you know again the same thing like you know those days were so beautiful right and you know regardless of like people may say that okay we were not as advanced as today you know you have ai and 
machine learning and everything in this age but those days also were beautiful right but at the same time you would have an expectation that okay i want to put this out to the world right. so at the same time there has to be some financial support so that you know i can continue doing such things well for that installation i can tell you there i had no expectation in terms of financial support right. but i did hope that you know people would want to showcase it at other places right. i was also very lucky i think putting up art in a public space is very important to engage with the general public right. because somebody who is partially initiated into art or they are really into art or they are your friends and family they are the only people who visit the galleries so unless you take the art to the public the public rarely you know walks up to an exhibition or a gallery space opens the door and walks in and looks at an artwork so i think it's also important to take the art to the public itself so that make it easier for them to interact with it absolutely because all these things that you are trying to do or any of the artists try to do and speak about through their artwork it stays within the confines of the white cube yes. and you know we need to move from the white cube as well while we sit in a white cube today yes. and uh, that's also important and this journey of an artist uh, long back before i did my own solo show i did the solo show of an artist and i had yes. thought and i had planned that i would you know i have, would have enough money every year to sponsor one the first solo show of an artist who i felt needed to be on that you know I, just the jump that is required to move on in life as an artist i just did that one show and i was never able to do that again i'm so happy that uh, we've been able to you know set put up this show and just one more thing that i want to know about which probably we missed why did we choose the 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 name in a portuguese phrase the title of the show itself is a portuguese phrase why was it important to you i know but i would want people to know why it is important to you what are the reasons why that happened when we talk about so when we were talking about you know the back to life resurrection aspect of uh, this exhibition um i really thought that we should connect it to the goan roots that i have so um my as a child i was brought up by my grandmom i'm sure most of us you know like have been brought up by our grandparents and those good good old days where you know the grandmoms used to just pamper us so i had a very strict grandmom who was uh, a goan and uh, heavy portuguese influence because during she was she went to a school where she learned, where she had her education in the portuguese uh, medium and uh, she said her prayers in portuguese and and she was a very driven woman uh, and she kept us on our toes you know so uh, but but i have really fond memories of her you know so and and some of my works do uh, speak about the memories that i have of her kitchen uh, and how she used to love to manage it and so um, i really thought that you know that part of me should come out somewhere and that's how you know jo volta vida is uh portuguese in portuguese is back to life right and i think uh, it's good to kind of remember your roots and where while you're putting like the kitchen and all and that's a very personal thing for you a viewer might or might not get that context right. but for you you've put that memory of your grandmother yes you know of or of your childhood into it and the name itself you've used that we were also very lucky to have the ambassador from portugal in india uh, jao to come and inaugurate and so enthusiastically look at that relationship that exists between india and portugal yes goa yes. being a very you know i mean very interesting spot where yes. i was able to go you know recently and so i think it's about us it's about you and the title also comes from your childhood it although you do not speak the language yes. but there are terms and there are things that have remained in your mind and and the sounds i'm sure yes. that you will still remember yes. anything else that you would want to speak about that you think that this exhibition which is at the uh, open palm court gallery in the india habitat center from the 24 to the 29th of february and then travels to urban fringe the underground studio in okla 
uh, from the second to the tenth. Anything else that you would want the viewers to know? Anything else that you think that we've missed out in our conversation? Um, I think uh, I think I have tried. We have tried to cover uh, every aspect, the the essence of this, all the works here. Right. Um, I really would uh, invite all the viewers to uh, come and experience and engage with the works, share their thoughts with us and also at Urban Fringe where uh, you know we'll be opening on the 2nd March. Second of March and uh, I really want, I'm really all ears now because right. I want to interact with people, understand how they have, they are taking these works and whether the message that what I have been trying to, what I'm trying to give through this exhibition, whether it is passing through. Right. I think it's important to learn from people what they understand and what they uh, visualize from the works that we call our art. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm thankful to Chorus Entertainment for doing this for us. And uh, it's a tremendous job. Now that this video is going to be on YouTube and will last far beyond when the exhibitions are over, both the Habitat and the Urban Fringe, uh, I'm sure that Hazel, you can find on Instagram yeah. and we'll probably have the hashtags and the handles there. But I think it's important to learn from the viewers what they think about our show. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.